Attention! This makes absolutely no sense. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Xander's Facts. Hey, hey, y'all, what is going on? Welcome into the latest edition of the Xander's Facts podcast. I am, of course, the aforementioned Xander, and this is episode 72 of the podcast here on Wednesday, July 27th. Episode 72 on July 27th. Just switch them around. How about that? But thank you all for listening. And remember, if you like the Xander's Facts podcast, if you think you're going to like all the facts on this edition of the podcast, remember to click the follow button on this podcast, download this episode, episode 72, rate the podcast, review the podcast, go on all your socials, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Xander's Facts, that is Xander with a Z. And most importantly, remember to tell all your friends, spread the facts! Xander's Facts Podcast. Tell all your friends about all 72 episodes of the Xander's Facts Podcast. And tell all your friends about Xander's Weekend Facts, which if you haven't done, you need to subscribe to, which you can do in the link in this episode's description. Xander's Weekend Facts is our newsletter that comes out every Sunday morning. It's got a recap of the top headlines with all the facts from the past week. You need to check it out every Sunday morning. Sign up in this episode's description, Xander's Facts. So this is episode 72 as we are wrapping up July, which is kind of sad because July is Xander's favorite month. So sad. But I've got a fun podcast to end the month. Our previous podcasts, a bunch of our podcasts, most of our podcasts probably, but a bunch of them recently have been very serious. We've been talking about very serious topics, which we should be because they're very important. But this one is absolutely not serious. It is the opposite of serious. It is silly, but it's fun. I had a good time talking with our Xander's Facts soccer analyst, Emma Adams, who came back on the podcast this week to preview the European club soccer season, which begins in the next few weeks. We've got some games this weekend. The next weekend, August 5th, the Premier League starts. Oh, So we had a lot of soccer to talk about. And the women's Euros are going on. The final is on Sunday. We talk about those at the end. And we also get into the rankings, our own rankings, because we ranked our favorite Premier League clubs from 20 to 1. There's 20 clubs in the Premier League, and we ranked them based on our favorites. So if you don't know who Xander's favorite Premier League club is, you're going to want to tune in. And even if you think you know, you might not know. So we are going to talk about that with Emma Adams on episode 72. We are talking soccer as the Zader Specs podcast continues. Xander's Facts. Xander's Facts podcast, episode 72. Welcome back to the podcast. This week we are talking soccer, specifically club soccer, because we may be in July, but the European club soccer season is starting very soon. And to talk about that, we have got our very own Sanders Facts soccer analyst, Emma Adams, rejoining the podcast. Emma, how are you? I am good. I'm excited to be back. How are you doing? I am doing wonderful. We are talking... European soccer, as I said, which is, I mean, MLS is, you know, the best, but it's kind of below MLS. That's not a fact. We're going to talk about the top five European soccer leagues whose seasons begin in just a few weeks. We're going to talk about Premier League in England, Bundesliga in Germany, Serie A in Italy, Ligue 1 in France, and La Liga in Spain. Those five. And, well, we're going to mostly stick with the Premier League because that is M. Adams' favorite league, yes. even though it should be MLS. But we're going to talk about Premier League, and we're also going to do something fun. We're going to rank our favorite Premier League clubs from most hated to most favorited. So we're going to do that for the Premier League. We'll talk about club soccer, which starts a little early in early j- August because the World Cup is of course in November and December. So they gotta take a month break. So it's starting early. So Xander's facts preview. It's starting early too. Yeah, I mean there you go. So we've got the five leagues we gotta talk about. Let's start though 
with the Premier League. But before we do our preview, we are going to do our little rankings. We're going to have a little fun with our 20 favorite Premier League clubs. Of course, there's only 20 in the entire league. Not in the entire history, though. Clubs do rotate. But we're talking about 20 favorite clubs for the 22-23 season. Promotion, relegation. Yeah. For this current season, we've got our list, our top 20. We're making waves here. This is going to be very controversial. People are going to get angry at us. No one cares. So we're going to do our two lists simultaneously. Like, and we're going to start at the bottom. Our most, our least favorite. I'll say that. Most hated, least favorite. No, we're going to start with M. Adams' list. Number 20, your least favorite Premier League club, M. Adams. Would be the only team who is good because they have money, Manchester City. Oh, wow. That is true, actually. They got some dirty money. They have a lot of money, and money can buy everything. Don't let anyone tell you money can't buy happiness, because money can buy happiness, and it can (laughs) buy you titles. It bought a lot of Man City fans' happiness. It bought a lot of Man City fans' happiness, so... If you say so. All right, well, I actually, for my number 20, in the same vein, I didn't pick Man City, though. I picked Newcastle, because Newcastle has the Saudi money. They're, it's the same group, which I guess is the government, that does the live golf thing, which is not good. So I got, I had Newcastle for my 20. Okay, number 19, we also have a big money grabber who, literally the thing that bothers me so much with this team is they buy anyone with a name, but they don't know how to build a team. And that is Manchester United Mm. they just like they have they like Pogba Ronaldo you get really good players but they don't know how to utilize them into the team so that's why they're number 19 well and they're a Liverpool rival you know yeah yeah well number 19 for Xander is Liverpool because this one's a little targeted (laughs) well first off they're garbage I do I will say I do like my guy what's his name Jurgen, because he expresses some good political views, but the rest of the club is absolutely garbage. I don't like red. First, they're red. That's terrible. They cheat. Half the clubs are red. I think. Well, my VAR, it's called Live VAR Pool because they only get all the VAR calls. It's terrible. Ridiculous. Like, seriously. Spit in the truth. God, soccer. Liverpool is 19. Number 18. Number 18, this is self explanatory. Everton. Um, <laughs> it's just right and wrong, yes and no, Liverpool, Everton, like black and white, basically. The toffees, so. the toffees. And I have Manchester United as my 18, so they're because they have Penaldo for now. And they don't have my guy, Sir Alex Ferguson, who I like because we share names. So, you know, that was back in the day. All right, number 17. 17, I think this team is dirty. They also broke one of my players legs um and that would be tottenham dirty team nasty team the spurs gross team you for my 17 we're now getting to the point where it's kind of like you know i don't really care 17 is west ham because they are a london rival to one of my favorite teams who are going to be at the top of this list and you might know who that is but honestly also ham overrated as a meat i mean let's be honest seriously debatable okay for my 16 i'm gonna go with lester what i just don't really like jamie vardy what do he do to you he's just nah. all right well my 16 is southampton or i don't know how you say that southampton because well first off it's one word it should be two words southampton that doesn't make any sense also it's a city i've never heard of it i don't I don't care. 16, Sally up to number 15. Is one that has a little bit of history. That would be Crystal Palace because that game cost us the title a few years back on the last day of the season. The Palace? I mean, how about that? 15, I've got Brighton and Ove Albion. First off, I think they're located in Brighton, but they've got three names on there, so it doesn't make any sense. Second off, they're like the Seagulls. Which can be annoying. So, 
That's 15. What about 14? 14, I have Aston Villa. Bro, same! Really? Wow. What? I don't really have much to say about them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Just like, you know, who cares? Yeah. How about 13? 13, I have Southampton. We've gotten like Van Dyke and a few of our other standout players. Yeah, so they've given us good players. We have a good relationship with them, but they're 13th. 13th for me is Bournemouth. Bournemouth is the one of the teams, one of the three teams that are being promoted from the championship. So I have no clue what they, I don't, I don't know. So they're 13th. So how about number 12? 12, I have Newcastle. But they have dirty money. I wasn't aware of that. So, whoops. All right. So for my 12, I have Wolverhampton Wanderers, which need to pick a nickname, okay? Because they go by Wolves, but their name is Wanderers. Is Wolverhampton a city? I guess so. I don't know. So they're, they're 12 for reasons that are just not even about soccer. How about 11? The only reason is this high is because I like Sokka and that's Arsenal. I just really like him, yeah. 11 is Crystal Palace. See that Crystal, what does that even mean? What do they play in a Crystal Palace? I don't think so. They're kind of mean to Chelsea. So 11 for them. So now we're, I'm going to start like getting emotional about these. Like the other ones I don't care about. But we get into the top 10 now. These are ones I'm like, all right, here we go. So number 10. Number 10, this is going to come as a surprise, but Chelsea. No! They should be number one, please! Terrible. I don't hate Chelsea. I think they're fun to watch. I like Uh, some of their players. I know one in particular. Well, I don't know about him. Um, But I like them. What? And I liked them especially like five years ago or so when they were at their peak. But yeah, Chelsea's number 10. They're in a bit of a dip right now. But that's okay because they will re- they they will build around one player. Well, for, I'm not gonna talk about. It. They're not on my list yet. Number ten is Manchester City because they had Zach Steffen, who was the U.S. goalkeeper, but they loaned him. They had him last year. They loaned him to Middlesbrough in the Championship, so they did have him. And also, Pep might be the next U.S. manager for 2026. What are you talking about? What a guy, Pep. I mean, what a what a nice man. We'll talk, we'll talk about that. No, that's number 10. How about number nine? So number nine and number three. Yeah, number nine and number three, I don't really care about. They're just teams that I have kind of no opinion on. So number nine is Bournemouth. So for my number nine, I've got Leicester because back before I started watching the Premier League, they had that big season where they won the whole thing and nobody thought they were going to. And first off, I had Jamie Vardy in one of my FIFA Ultimate teams one time, so I like him. Number nine. Number eight. Brentford. Okay, Brentford. The bees. Number eight for me is Everton, because the Toffees, because <laughs> a Chelsea legend, Frank Lampard, as their manager. They did kind of, they kind of caused me some uh, troubles at the end of the season when they beat Chelsea and the guy put the ball under his shirt. That was kind of weird, but number eight, because they are Liverpool's main rivals. That's why they're so far up there. Number seven. Yeah. Number seven, I have Wolves. Kind of liked them. They they were underdogs and they did fairly well um, in the past few seasons, so. Pick a nickname, I mean, seriously. Number seven, the bees. Oh, I got Brentford because last year when the Premier League started, I had, I didn't know who I was written for. And NBC told me to pick the Brentford bees, so I did. But now I don't care about them. But number seven. Number six. Number six, I have Fulham. They're just there. They're just there. Oh my gosh, we're going to get to them. Number six is Tottenham Hotspur because... <laughs> they are a Chelsea rival, but London rival. Okay, number five. Number five, I have Leeds. Number five! Bro, two! Leeds United. Do you know who their manager is? Uh, Who is it? Uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you later. Mm. Leeds is fun. It's a cool little place. Yeah. Leeds. Number five, 
we're starting to get into the good ones because I got Nottingham Forest because the tricky trees. And also, they had a U.S. goalie, Ethan Horvath, who they loaned to Luton Town. So, I mean, I, st I like the tricky trees. Number four. Four for two very special reasons. Danny Welbeck, who I used to really like, an Arsenal player, and my own beloved Adam Alana. We're going to go with Brighton Hove Albion. The Seagulls. Fun fact, Lalana was hanging out with Liverpool players the other day. It was very nice. Arsenal. Arsenal, because they have, as their backup goalkeeper, Matt Turner, who came over the summer from New England Revolution, who started a bunch of U.S. games recently. So, number four, the, uh, the Gunners. Number three. Number three, you're going to love this one. I have the tricky trees. Oh, the tricky trees! Nottingham Forest. But mm. I also, I just kind of put them there because they're new. Who doesn't love the tricky trees? They won the promotion playoff. Like, you know, tricky trees. They're underdogs. Everyone loves an underdog, so. I know, just like everyone loves number three, Fulham. Full America! Because Fulham is owned by the same guy who owns the Jacksonville Jaguars. But Fulham Liverpool's does not... owned by the same person as the Boston Red Sox. The, Bo <sighs> the Red Sox are terrible. Fulham, so the Jaguars. The Jaguars are awful. Fulham has Tim Ream and Jedi Robinson, Americans. So, full America. And they have, they've had a bunch of U.S. guys over the years, so, you know, full America. That well, makes sense why they keep getting relegated. Need some ice for that sick burn? Well, they will not be this time. <laughs> Number two. Number two, I have West Ham. What? I'm secretly a bit of a West Ham fan. Um, oh. One of our good friends is a West Ham fan. That's Ham is an overrated meat. It is. I do agree with that very much. But I like Declan Rice. I like Jared Bowen. But West Ham had Frank Lampard, Glenn Johnson, who was one of my favorite defenders in Liverpool Lifetime. I don't really care about Frank Lampard. You just said that's why you like Everton. Yeah, well, different reasons. And, well, let me tell you something about Declan Rice, okay? He's English, so you, of course you're going to like him. And also, he was, Chelsea was trying to get him. And West Ham valued him at 150 million pounds. And all the Chelsea fans were like, We need this man! He's the future! He's a hero! No, he's not. He's only English. That's why... <sighs> Number two for me is Chelsea, by the way. Like, for ridiculous. They just love Mason Mount, Reese James. I like Reese James, but Mason Mount, I mean, seriously, what has he ever done? I mean, come on. Reece also, James Mason, I love you. Also, Reese James is overrated. Yes. Really? You like Trent Alexander-Arnold, bro. Come on, the most overrated man in the history of soccer. Okay. Hold on, really quick. This is a side note, but... One thing that makes United so bad, so bad, is... Which United? Man United. Oh. One thing that I really hate is Harry Maguire. And oh. I'm I will die on a post about this because, A, he has, like, assault charges that got dropped, and then he was still captain after the assault charges. He's awful. He's an awful person. Really not that good at soccer. Like, I just, very overrated. I think they should drop him. He should not be captain. He should be sold. It's a fact. But what did I say? Chelsea's number two because they have, Chelsea has the best player in the world. In the his, world. <laughs> his name is Christian Pulisic, if you didn't know. He's probably, he's number 10. He's probably the best player to ever come out of the America, the Premier League. It probably, I mean, they don't know what to do with him. Thomas Tuchel has no clue what to do with him because he's so good. Like, Captain America. That's basically why. If Christian Pulisic was not on Chelsea, or if he went to another team, Chelsea would be like 15th on this list. I wouldn't give a crap. But they yeah. have the best player in the world. So number two is Chelsea, of course. Beautiful. All right, so we are down now. This is taking a while. To the final team. Who is it? For Eva Adams, who's her favorite team? Number one. Number one, this is not a shocker if you've watched any of our other podcasts together, but it is the one and only greatest team, Liverpool. 
How many Premier League championships do they have? You know what? One. They have one. They have more when it was a different name. They actually have the most um, Champions League. Okay, maybe do it, like, in the last 30 years. Like, seriously, come on. Well, how many has Chelsea won? Like, five. Champions League? No, Premier League. No, Champions League. Oh, Champions there. League, I don't know. World. Like, three. In the world. Uh, When was the last time Liverpool won a Champions League title? Uh, Like, three years ago. And Chelsea won it last year, so thank you very much. With Christian Pulisic! Oh my gosh. Do you remember watching that game? Christian Pulisic almost scored the 2-0 goal. That would have been sweet. Almost. Well, he was close. It was a bad pass. So number one for me is the greatest team, Leeds. Leeds United, who are owned by the same group as the 49ers, the football team in San Francisco, because Leeds have the best manager Right now, I would say it's Pep and Jurgen, but very close, a third, best managers in the world, Jesse Marsh, because he is he saved Leeds in the middle of the season. Bielsa got fired, he got dumped, and they spring up Jesse Marsh, who left Leipzig because bad things, not his fault. And then he saves them from relegation. Everybody was thinking, everybody was thinking they were gonna get relegated. They did not, because Jesse Marsh. And then this offseason, they get Brennan Aronson, the Medford Messi, and then they get Tyler Adams from Leipzig. Two great American players. Honestly, I think if I had to pick the teams that were going to the Champions League this year, Leeds would be one of them. I mean, let, let's be honest. That's a hot take. I mean, we're not going to do that, but you know, Leeds is probably one of the greats. I mean, this year they're amazing. I'm a Leeds fan. I'm going to get a Medford Messi jersey. We should. How about that? I got a Trent jersey. I don't think so. I would say he's probably a better midfielder than... Midfielder? He's right a right. He's a wingback. Why do he, he play... He would be a better midfielder than a wingback. Well, Jurgen knows what he's doing. I don't know, because sometimes Trent lacks in defending, but he's really good at like crosses and going up. So. Number one is Leeds. The best team in the world. Number 20 should have been Liverpool, but it was Newcastle. So, we just did that little thing because... We wanted to create some online stir. Number so our top twenty favorite Premier League clubs leads. Wow. So with that out of the way, let's actually get to our preview this season for the Premier League. Thanks goodness that's over. Last season was pretty crazy. I think we mentioned it last time you were on the podcast, but the last day of the season, Man City that's and wild. Liverpool. They were every team, all 20 teams were playing at the same time. Manchester City was up by a point over Liverpool, so they needed to win because Liverpool was going to beat whoever. Man City was down 2-0 to Aston Villa, and then they come back, they win 3-2. Uh, I was in a bar in Italy watching that game, and there was like one side had the City game on, one side had the Liverpool game on. Uh. And we were just all standing there praying, and there was a time we thought we were going to win it because we were up and they were down. And we were like, we had it. Coutinho scored. He, or I'm pretty sure Coutinho scored, right? Or he got brought on. And I, I mean, I mean, if anyone, Coutinho and Steven Gerrard. Gerrard manages Villa. Coutinho played for them. Like, they were going to save it for us. Our former players were going to win it for us, and they didn't. A Liverpool legend didn't pull it off for us. What's his name? Patrick Vieira, the manager of Crystal Palace, was the manager of NYCFC. How about that? It's the truth. I mean, Amer he's not American, but you know. How about that? Well, also, you weren't watching the Leeds game? Leeds were, Leeds thought no, they might get relegated. I actually did follow that on BBC Sport. BBC. Leeds, Leeds might have gotten relegated. Like, that game went to the yeah, front. they had to was... win. So Man City won the title. Liverpool did not. And Adams cried. Now, this season... Man City, they got rid of Gabriel Jesus and Raheem Sterling. They went to Premier League clubs. And everybody's Liverpool's like, oh my gosh, thank goodness. But Man City then gets Erling Holland from Dortmund, who everybody thinks is great. And they have Jack Grealish, who is kind of garbage. But, uh, yeah, overrated. And he's, oh, yeah, a British player you think is overrated. How about that? I think. Well, he's not good. First off, I don't know if you've seen this video, but there's a video online. They ask him, they point, they have a map of England. They say, what hometown you're from? He says, oh, that's England? I don't know. 
He didn't know what England looked like! God. I mean, seriously, he's not good. You dummy! Liverpool lost Sadio Mane, but they got Darwin Nunes. Nunes, yeah. And they re-signed Mo Salah, because that, people were kind of like, Mo Salah might leave. 25, three-year extension. Well, he's That's old now, so. He is number one pick on the Fantasy Premier League draft. Mo okay, Salah. and I'm not going to pick him. Christian Pulisic, number one. All right, so then uh, Tottenham and Arsenal. You've got Tottenham getting Perisic and Rickarlson. And you've got Arsenal getting Matt Turner Gabriel Jesus and Zinchenko from Man City. Oh, but Zinchenko lost. But that was really nice because Zinchenko is from Ukraine and yeah. he draped the Premier so League trophy sad. in that the was... Ukraine flag. And he was, yeah, it was very nice. Yeah, that was very, that was like very, it was nice, but also sad. Like... But he's on Arsenal now. Chelsea lost Lukaku, which is actually a plus because Lukaku is garbage. But they also lost. Rudiger and to, to Real, he's he was actually good. But they did add Raheem Sterling and Koulibaly. They tried to add Jules Conde, but Barcelona took him. So. What do you think about Sterling? I don't know. He plays left wing. Why would you get a left wing when you have a player who plays on the left wing? He's probably the greatest player in the world. His name is Christian Pulisic. See, what well, I think Sterling would always fumble at City. They thought he was really good for Liverpool. City bought him. He kind of didn't meet his mark at City totally. So now he's getting sold. I just think he should go to a different league. Well, the thing about Chelsea is, and I think the thing that hurt them last year, is they had so much rotation in their front three. They had Luka Mason Mount was playing in the front three, even though he's a midfielder for some reason. Lukaku, Havertz, hudson Adoy. Pulisic, Werner, Ziyech, they were all playing regularly. Like, so I don't, and it didn't work. And Tuchel acknowledged it didn't work. So I don't understand why you would get another player who's going to play regularly for you when you lost, when your back line was decimated by the Spanish leagues. So you need to grab more players like Koulibaly and Koundé, who they lost to Barcelona. And then their midfield is not good either. Jorginho is not good. So, like, I, t I don't understand what they're doing. And they have a new owner, Todd Bowley, and I like them now because he's an American. Also, a William and Mary grad. How about that? Virginia. Okay. Shout out. Uh -huh. But I don't understand what they're doing. He's also the owner of the Dodgers. So he doesn't, I mean, I don't know. He's probably just trusting Tuchel with everything. And then there's Manchester United, who have Penaldo still, Cristio Ronaldo, Sui. <laughs> which, for now, I mean, he might leave. Apparently, he could have gone to Chelsea. Chelsea actually need a striker. But Tuchel said no. I just don't, un I d I don't understand. That's ridiculous. So, we're going to make our pick for who's going to win the Premier League. But first, I do have to say that there are a bunch of U.S. players in the league. You might know because they've got Christian Pulisic with Chelsea, Matt Turner at Arsenal, Tim Ream and Anthony Robinson, I said with Fulham, and you've got Brendan Aronson and Tyler Adams with Leeds. So, I mean, you better watch out because all the good players are American. So I'm just saying. And Liverpool doesn't have any of them, which is Liverpool has American owners, but they've never had American players. So, hmm. All right, so last year I did a club soccer season preview, but M. Adams wasn't on it, so it was just me. And I picked Chelsea to win the league, which was going pretty good for a while. And then Christian Pulisic started not getting played enough, so that was bad. Hopefully that changes. But we've got new picks this year. So M. Adams, who is your pick to win the Premier League for the 2022-2023 season? And do not say Liverpool. City. Oh, okay. See, that is what money can get you. It's a point. It's not even fun. It's not even fun anymore because they're just like, oh, here you go again. Yeah, I would like, I would like Chelsea, but I think Chelsea are some deep doo doo right now, like rough times. So I, I pick City as well because it's not gonna be fun. No. I don't want them to win, but they. I mean, let's be honest, they will. 
All right, so we've both got City winning the Premier League, which begins August 5th. It's a lot earlier this year. And the Premier League in the U.S. can be watched on NBC, USA, and Peacock. NBC Sports. That's one league down, but we got four to go. And we can just hit these. We've got, um, let's go to Germany, the Bundesliga. Because last season, and for the last ten seasons, Bayern Munich been going crazy. They won the league title the last ten years. How about that? They got 77 points last year. They finished eight points ahead of Borussia Dortmund, who were in second. But the thing with the Bundesliga is, arguably the two best players in the league are no longer there. Robert Lewandowski was at Bayern. He's gone. He's at Barcelona now. And Erling Holland is at Man City. So, I mean, it's kind of, like, wide open now. Uh, I'm going to say Munich, because they just yeah. got Sadio Mane. Scored on his debut, I'm pretty sure. I think they're going to do well. Well, uh, last year, last year I was kind of on the Leipzig bandwagon because they had Jesse Marsh. He was their manager when the season started. And they had Tyler Adams, but both of them are gone. So I don't care about them anymore. And Red Bull is kind of bad. So I've got Dortmund actually winning their ninth league title, their first since 2012. Bayern Munich would lose the league title for the first time in 10 years, which needs to happen because that's ridiculous. I mean, seriously, the German fans don't want to watch Bayern Munich win every year. Like, that's boring. Who cares? No. So I've got Dortmund. And Dortmund have a really amazing player. His name is Giovanni Reina. He is from the United States of America. I mean, he's absolutely incredible. But Bayern also have a player named Chris Richards, who's from America. But he's not as good as Reina. And Malik Tillman, who's only 18 years old, was with Bayern. But he moved to Rangers in Ireland. So he's not there anymore. And also in Bundesliga, Jordan Pifok just won the Swiss Super League scoring title with young boys, he is at Union Berlin now, and Ricardo Pepe is at Augsburg. So a bunch of U.S. talent. How about that? America! But I do have Dortmund winning in the Bundesliga, and which also kicks off on August 5th. And all Bundesliga matches are on ESPN Plus in the U.S. So let's go to Spain, La Liga. Real Madrid won not just the league title, but the European title because they won the Champions League over... Who did they win it over last year? The referees. <laughs> uh, Le Liverpool is who they beat in the Champions League title. And they finished 13 points ahead of Barcelona. They had 86 points. So they won the league title for the 35th time Real Madrid did. Whoa. So they're the defending UEFA Champions League winners. But Barcelona are getting a bunch of players like Lewandowski. And they're stealing players from Chelsea, which I don't like. So, for my pick, last year I picked Real Madrid to win the league, so I actually got that one correct. Because Atletico won it the year before, I was like, no, Real Madrid's going to win. So I've got Real Madrid going for it again, because they have Vinicius Jr. Shout out to Goose, that's his favorite player, and that's his favorite team. That's my line! But, Barcelona I think is going to make it very close this year, because mm. their back line is probably the best. Because... They have a man named Serginio Dest, who is a U.S. men's national teamer, and he's one of the greats. So Does there you start? go. I think mostly. He should. He should. He's one of the greatest players in the world. I am going to go. It's always close between Barca and Real Madrid, except for last year, clearly. I would probably say Real Madrid. They're in good form right now. But like you said... Barcelona is going to come close because I mean when you get Le Lewandowski that's 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 big that's a big yeah. add so and Barcelona well Serginho Dest was injured a lot last year so that's why it wasn't that close mm -hmm. but also Barcelona Barcelona I thought was broke like I thought they were bankrupt like I didn't think they had any money and now they're buying all these players they're buying players up that Chelsea wants and they're like we're gonna pay you in full right now it's like, where do you get that money from get that dough so we've both got Real Madrid and let me also just say that the U.S. men's national team has some players in Spain, including Serginho Dest, but also Luca de la Torre, who is coming to Celta Vigo 
Serginha Des is at Barca. Yunus Musa is at Valencia. And Matthew Hoppe is at Mallorca, which is the island off of Spain, which I would like to go to. I would like to go to as well. So La Liga kicks off on August 12th, and all La Liga matches are on ESPN Plus in the U.S. So now we can go to a pretty quick league, the Ligue 1 in France, which has been dominated by Paris Saint-Germain recently. They have they won the title last year. That was their 10th league title, their 8th in the last 9 years. They Who finished with the big time? Lille. Mm. They finished with 86 points and Lille has Tim Weah, who is a regular US starter. And also Conrad de la Fuente plays for Marseille Olympique. But PSG, I mean Marseille is was second and Monaco was third. Monaco is its own country. Fact nugget. They were top three finishers last year, but PSG have Neymar, Messi, Mbappe. Like, I mean, it's probably not going to be close. So, and I did pick PSG to win it last year, and I was correct. So, PSG, I mean, come on. Let's be I real. would have to agree. I would like to know someone who picked Marseille or Monaco to win. I'd like to pick Monaco. I think Monaco would be pretty cool, but. Mm. They have. Yeah, they just bought Minamino from us. Yusuf, who used to play for Tottenham. I think Monaco is one of my favorite teams. Lille might be my favorite, though, because they have Tim Way, and he's pretty good. So Ligue 1 kicks off on August 5th, and all Ligue 1 matches are on B in sports. So Serie A is our final European league. Serie A is probably, maybe outside of the Premier League, but Serie A has been probably the most competitive of the top five leagues the last few years, Juventus won a ton of titles in a row, but the last two years have been Inter Milan and AC Milan. They've traded the title the last two years. AC Milan won it last year. They had 86 points, which was only two points over Inter. So that went down to the final day too, which was pretty cool. And also, Juventus, a U.S. great, Weston McKinney plays for Juventus. He's probably one of the best midfielders in the world. I mean, you talk about Trent Alexander-Arnold being a good midfielder. Weston McKinney would blow him out of the water. And he will in Qatar, but we'll talk about that. But he's also going to be coming off injury. So, I don't know. He's also the only U.S. player in Serie A. That's impressive. So the only team I care about, of course, is Juventus, which is why I'm picking Juventus. A former Chelsea coach, the mean guy. Oh! I am Jose Mourinho. I am Jose Mourinho. Man, I love Jose Mourinho. What are you talking about? Like he just... With Roma, Roma won the first ever conference league. Sorry, they're not even that good. <laughs> uh, they're in Europa League now. Because they won the conference. Yes, they did. Congratulations. I like them. I like Jose Mourinho. I am Jose Mourinho. That's when I liked Chelsea, was when he was manager... And then he went to Manchester United, and that didn't feel right. That did not feel right at all. So, Juventus is who I've got winning, because they will be led by Weston McKinney. I picked them to win it last year, but they finished fourth, so that didn't do so well. And they don't have Penaldo anymore, but they do have Weston McKinney and Paul Pogba. I'm going to go with AC Milan, because Divock Origi is there now. So, he is a Liverpool legend. Origi, goal scorer. He is the man of the minute, man of the hour. That put him on anytime, and he will play. Not only do they have Origi, they also have Oliver Giroud, who was an Arsenal legend. They have mm. Ibrahimovic, but I don't like him. Ah, Zlatan. So, I don't yes. like him. Um, oh man, he played for LA Galaxy. What a hoot that was. Uh, that I mean, was kicking people. AC Milan. All right. Well, yeah, AC Milan do have Zlatan, which is the reason they won last year. But even though he's like 36. He's so old. <laughs> it doesn't matter though. But Juventus will win. So, I mean, let's be honest. So that's Serie A. And all Serie A games, which start August 12th, are on Paramount Plus and CBS Sports. So that's our five. That's our previews. We just wrapped up our previews for the club soccer season in Europe, which begins actually this weekend is when the second division of English football begins. Soccer, sorry. Disrespectful! The championship begins this weekend. But we're not done with the podcast yet because we got some other quick hits to talk about, including women's soccer. 
this has been a big summer for women's soccer. The Euros have been going on, but more importantly, the CONCACAF W Championship took place earlier this month. And to no one's surprise, the number one ranked team in the world, the United States women's national team won, of course. They didn't they did not concede a goal in that tournament. I mean, that's that's called quality. There you go. So they won the CONCACAF W Championship, and they have qualified for next year's World Cup, which is in Australia and New Zealand for the women, and for the 2024 Paris Olympics. So how about that? But also, the women's Euros are going on in England. Coming They're home. still going on. It's coming on. The final takes place this Sunday, and the semifinals are taking place this week for the women's Euros. And so we're recording, we're recording this on Monday, and the semifinals take place Tuesday and Wednesday. So if you're listening to this, you probably already know who's going to be in the final, but we don't know yet. But so tomorrow eight... is England versus Sweden on which Tuesday. Is a little scary because Sweden Ooh. is ranked number two. Mm. How'd that go? Who's in the in the other semifinals? France and Germany play on Wednesday, and the winners of those matches will play in Sunday's final, which takes place at Wembley Stadium at noon Eastern on ESPN and ESPN Plus. Yes. So, we have to make some picks here. First off, your pick is irrelevant because we all know who it's going to be and it's not, no. But to be fair, let me say something. Okay. I have never been that into women's soccer. And that is nothing on the behalf of women. It is just the fact that it's not broadcast and talked about as much, so it's harder to get into. But England's... um, Women's team has been exceptional this year, especially with it being at home. But you you have a lot of very impressive people. You've got um, Kirby, Ellen White. What country does Alex Morgan play for? Uh, the UK. Me- the UK. She uh, would the- never. Oh, she did. Remember in 2019, the Women's World Cup where U.S. beat France, U.S. beat England in the semifinal? Ah, uh, the sip of the tea with the cup with the pinky. I mean, that was an epic celebration. Right yeah, there. Lioness fans. Um, I can't wait until Christian Pulisic does that in November. I don't think he's gonna do that because he plays for a British, like an English club. So. He doesn't care. Please. I. The Lionesses just have a really good squad this year. I'm very happy with them. Yeah. So now we have the semis and we play Sweden. I hope they win. England was down, actually, for about 30 minutes. Spain scored in the 54th minute, making it 1-0. And then England didn't score until the 84th minute. So they only had six minutes to score. But then they scored an extra time and won. So it's coming home. It's not. Germany's going to win the Euros. They have not lost a match yet in the tournament, we which means they haven't drawn anybody. We They've haven't only lost won. a match either. Have you drawn? Yes, but we haven't lost. Germany has not drew. Germany has only won. They have not drawn anybody. Also, I couldn't tell you a player on Germany. I probably couldn't tell you a player on England either. But Germany is going to win. I mean, out of that, Sanders mm-hmm. facts. Sanders facts. Germany didn't play good teams. So the United States has not conceded a goal since April 9th, when they conceded one goal to Uzbekistan, but they scored nine in that game. It was nine one. So. You know. First off, I don't think the Euros actually matter because the number one team in the world isn't playing. Like, if they wanted to actually be a real competition, that's you'd like invite saying, the best team. That's like saying men's CONCACAF doesn't matter because the number one team in the world isn't there. Well, everyone knows the men's rankings are all jacked up. You know, I just think the men's and the women's games are so different, you just, you just, you really can't compare. So, but, but the U.S. is great in both. So, I mean, how about that? <laughs> so Germany... <laughs> Germany is going to win the U the women's Euros, but Emma Adams thinks England, and that's okay. Yes, but but we also have some a couple other things to talk about. But before we uh, get to those, I do have to have a little rant because I just talked about a bunch of the U.S. talent that's in a bunch of the European leagues. There's a lot more U.S. talent as well in the Championship, which is the second tier of English soccer. We've I. Talked about Zach Steffen, goalkeeper from Middlesbrough. He was loaned. Ethan Horvath was with the Tricky Trees, but he got loaned to Luton Town. So he's with Luton Town right now. 
Daryl DK is with West Brom, Dwayne Holmes is with Huddersfield, and Josh Sargent and Sebastian Soto are with Norwich. They got relegated last year, but that was rough. But hopefully they'll come back up because U.S. players. And then in Ireland, you've got the big rivalry between Rangers and Celtic. James Sands plays for Rangers. Kieran Carter-Vickers plays for Celtic. U.S. players, how about that? And then in Europe, you've got a ton more players. Not to mention all the national teamers playing in MLS. Like, there's so many good players, honestly. And also, I wanted to get and Adam's thoughts on this, talking about MLS, we're talking about DC United, who just hired Wayne Rooney, England's all-time record goal scorer, as DC United's manager. I mean, how about that? I think that's really cool, and that is coming from a person who hates Wayne Rooney. Rude! I didn't like him at Virgin, I didn't like him at United. He was overrated, and he compared to Steven Gerrard, who was much better than him. What about the um, England national team? If you do well for our country, that's fine. Harry Maguire. Um, he doesn't do well for the country. Though. I do think it's really cool, especially from being kind of close to DC. Pretty cool to have a big name coach a team around us, and it it definitely brings more soccer fans into the picture. Like, even I told my family that we should go up and watch a DC United game because it would be cool. Well, he better like work some magic because DC right now are in last place. They have the least amount of points in MLS. <laughs> But also speaking of MLS, LAFC, I don't know if you've heard who they've gotten, Giorgio Chiellini and Gareth Bale. Oh, Wales. I did that. Gareth Bale. Gareth Bale wants to play for Wales in the World Cup. but uh, yeah. I thought he retired. No, he's going to play like... the World Cup. I think this is going to be the last time in the World Cup. So there's also the defending champions NYCFC, who are owned by City Football Group, which also owns Man City, if you didn't know. They have 41 points so far this season, which is the most ever at this point in the season for a club the year after they won the MLS Cup. That's a fact! So they would be, if they won MLS Cup this year, they'd be the first back-to-back -back winners since LA Galaxy in 2011 and 2012. And then you've got the preseason friendlies, which is the last thing with MLS. So a bunch of the European teams have come over to the U.S. to play, including Everton, who played Minnesota United and lost 4-0. And Chelsea lost in penalties to Charlotte. I'm kind of a Charlotte fan, but like still, you can't, you cannot lose to MLS. Team. It's like, embarrassing. Come like, on. And a lot of people use the excuse like, it's just preseason, it's just preseason. But like, that hurts your ego. That hurts your soul yeah. if you lose to minnesota no no offense to minnesota but like everton is a well-known team around the world and like has a decent following and they they are all supposed to do well because frank lampard's their manager and like they're supposed to do well next season but when you lose four no you don't even score a goal <laughs> and you concede four that is a beating that's a beat. <laughs> that was not friendly. That was not. not no. It was rough times. We'll yeah. see what happens to Everton. I mean, that was rough. Well, I think they're projected to finish like 18th next season. So we'll see. Relegation. We'll see. But so that's MLS. And then you've got the World Cup. But we're not going to get into that because M. Adams is going to be back on in November when the World Cup happens. Yeah. So because we're going to ask how bad Gareth Southgate is. And she's going to say very. And we're going to be like, well, I mean, Greg Berhalter is the greatest manager, the fourth greatest manager right now. So, you know. There's going to be a lot of change to come. So so you. then the last thing we've got, I just wanted to mention the European club competitions, UEFA, which we're not going to guess predictions because that's kind of weird because you never know what's going on. Real Madrid won the Champions League for a record 14th time. Liverpool hasn't even done that. Eintracht Frankfurt won the Europa League, so they're going to be going to the Champions League, despite them finishing 11th in the Bundesliga last year. So that was the only way they were going to Champions League, and they did. And then we said Roma won the first ever edition of the Conference League. I am Jose Mourinho. So there you go. So then we got the Super Cup, which is the winners of last year's Champions and Europa Leagues, Real Madrid and Frankfurt. That's going to happen on August 10th. That's a boring game. Oh, but Chelsea won it last time. Who? But they got cheated last time, so they are not in it this time. So that's basically our 
Well, 20, hold tw on. Oh my god, we're not done. We're not done. Hold on. We also have coming up this Saturday the FA Community Shield Liverpool versus Manchester City. Oh, the FA Community Shield. You talk about the EFL Cup and the FA Cup, domestic cups in England, which Chelsea lost both of those to Liverpool on penalties, so they didn't really count. <laughs> Like, and first off, Christian Pulisic wasn't taking any of those penalties. Like, it was ridiculous. I Two agree. Goal. Chelsea underutilizes Pulisic. I don't know why they don't play him that much. Good question. Because they keep getting guys like Raheem Sterling, who play his position. It doesn't make any sense. Yes. But that's basically our 2022-2023 European club soccer preview. Because all the leagues, some of them, the Community Shield, is this weekend... And then the next weekend, we get Premier League, all that stuff, in August. So until football starts in September, we can watch soccer in August. I mean, how about that? Did you know that? All right, so for our club soccer season preview, our Xander's Fact soccer analyst, Emma Adams. Emma, thanks for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'll be back. Xander's Facts. Thanks once again to our Xander's Fact soccer analyst, Emma Adams, for coming on the podcast. We had a good time talking all the soccer that you need to know until November when we're talking World Cup, which is going to be very exciting. But that is episode 72 of the Xander's Facts podcast. Thank you all for listening. And remember, if you liked all the facts on this week's edition, there were a bunch of facts, even if you don't think there were. There were a bunch of facts on this podcast. Remember to follow the podcast, download this episode, episode 72, rate the podcast, and review the podcast. Then go on all your socials, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Xander's Facts, that is Xander with a Z. And most importantly, remember to tell all your friends. We call it Spread the Facts, Xander's Facts Podcast, episode 72. Tell all your friends it's got all the soccer facts you need to get ready for the club. European soccer season. And also, you can listen to this episode on YouTube. Xander's Facts is on YouTube, if you didn't know. So check out this episode, episode 72 on YouTube. You can check out the Xander's Facts link tree for all the links, including where you can listen to the podcast, where you can watch the podcast on YouTube, and all the Xander's Facts social media channels. There's links on the link tree, which is linked in this episode's description. And it also has a link for Xander's Weekend Facts, which I plugged earlier. But you gotta go read. Every Sunday morning, there's a new edition of Xander's Weekend Facts. Check it out. So, we are at the end of July, as I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast. And that means, this year, that Xander, myself, is taking a little bit of a break from the podcast. Just for, like, a couple weeks. No! Doing a little Xander's Facts vacation. But, while there will be no new podcast episodes for the next couple weeks there is going to be xander's facts flashbacks that are coming out every wednesday so you got to remember to check those out because those are some important topics that you may have missed so you're going to want to listen to them the xander's facts flashbacks are going to be coming out on wednesdays for the next few weeks and xander's weekend facts is also going to be coming out every sunday in august so you gotta check out xander's weekend facts because that's going to have all the updated facts the xander's facts flashbacks are cool but those are kind of outdated facts all the new facts are going to be on Xander's Weekend Facts. So you got to check out Xander's Facts Flashback, Xander's Weekend Facts. I'm going to be on social media, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, whatever. Xander's Facts is going to be active on there. But for the next few weeks, it's going to be Xander's Facts Flashback. So episode 73 is going to come in a couple of weeks in August. Oh, but it'll be a good one. I don't know what we're going to do yet. But episode 73 is going to be incredible trust me on that but that is it that is a wrap for episode 72 of the xander's facts podcast thank you all for listening and we'll see y'all with episode 73 next month
fact.